Welcome to In The Room, where we explore the elusive world of casting for film, TV, and commercials. Join us as we interview directors, writers, producers, and actors, taking a deep dive into their experiences with casting and how the ultimate decisions are made in bringing a story to the screen. Get an inside look at casting and find out what really goes on in the room. Frank mentioned that you uh, you served together, with Marines. Uh, infantry, uh, 141st Regiment. I know you hear this all the time, but thank you for your service. Uh, well, I don't I don't hear that all the time, but I was proud to serve my country. I don't want to be a member of just any club. I want to play here. I got to consider our other members, and they are just not used to seeing a Mexican on the golf course. I work. In a big shop, fetch ball boy. It's not even a tough shot, Felipe. Oh, yeah, Curtis says you can't do better. How about that? Jo, Jo, Jo. Where'd you learn to hit like that? How would you boys like to be the first members of the San Felipe High School golf team? <laughs> Us. <laughs> they asked me to join the new golf team today. Golf? I'm gonna bring you some sombrero anyway, man. Whenever you're invited to a gringo party, you're either the entertainment or the help. Let me ask you something. Are they any good? <clears throat> nope. But I don't want to be a babysitter to a bunch of juvenile delinquents who just want to get out of detention. You boys built all this. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Sorry, boys. When we spoke on the phone, I assumed you were American. Well, you assume right. Now, these teams, they've had access to a lot of things you boys haven't, but the best golfer isn't the one with the fanciest clubs. It's the one who can summon the will to keep swinging when things get tough, and that's you boys. People need to see us as more than just caddies and cannon fodder. You know, that's just life. Sometimes you land on the green, sometimes you're in the bunker, but you always play it as it lies. Okay, well, here we are. I'm Heather Kafka, and I'm an actor. My name is John Williams. I am a casting director. And today we're in studio with Julio Quintana. He is a director and writer, I would say, yes? Yep, yeah, I would yeah. say that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and John's handed me this huge piece of paper with a long and beautiful essay on it that I'm going to read. I here we think. Go. Good Lord. We'll see what we get through. I might abandon the whole thing. Julio Quintana was born in Los Angeles, the oldest of five brothers. His parents both left Cuba after nearly a decade under Castro's revolution, settling in California where his father became the first in his family to earn a college degree. Shortly after his birth, Quintana's family moved to Kenai, Alaska, and over the next decade, they moved five more times, experiencing life in various towns throughout California, Louisiana, and Texas which may have contributed to Quintana's fascination with cultural differences and commonalities. In 2000, Quintana enrolled in the mechanical engineering program at the University of Texas at Austin. Like you do. Mm -hmm. To be a filmmaker, that's the path you take. What else am I going to do? (laughs) But later switched to religious studies, like you do, where he explored the diverse palette of stories and mythologies that shaped human history. Intrigued by the role that stories play in forming human identities, he expanded his studies to include a second degree in radio, television, and film. After graduating, Quintana worked on The Tree of Life and To the Wonder, where he developed his unique style under the mentorship of legendary director Terrence Malick. He went on to write and direct his first feature film, The Vessel, starring Martin Sheen, which Malik Executive produced, and that was released in theaters in 2016 to critical praise. 
Quintana later wrote and directed his second feature film, Blue Miracle, starring Dennis Quaid and Jimmy Gonzalez, based on the true story of an orphanage in Cabo San Lucas that entered the world's biggest fishing tournament to save their home. The film was released as a Netflix original in 2021, where it has since gotten over 100 million views. Damn. Quintana's third feature film, The Long Game, starring Jay Hernandez, Dennis Quaid, and Cheech Marin. And an appearance from Heather Kafka. Hell yeah. <laughs> premiered at the 2023 South by Southwest Film Festival, where it received the Audience Award for Best Narrative Feature. The Long Game will be released in theaters in April 12th, and I can say it is a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. Absolutely wonderful. I want to say that screening at South by, and I've been to screenings all over the world, was the best screening I think I've had the audience reaction I've ever seen. Yeah, that's that, that was, you know, Dennis said the same thing. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of frame of reference. I've, I mean, I've been in other people's screenings at, at festivals that I didn't enjoy, but like that was a... Uh, I, I I couldn't I can't quite tell if it's the home team advantage. Like we had a bunch of people from Del Rio, and we had a bunch of pe- cast. You had the, the Mustang guys. Had the Mustang guys. Yeah, so oh we had like God. some of the old guys in wheelchairs that were the movie's about. And so oh. it, it was. I think it was a really unique, sp- specific situation that, that I think the movie works on all the levels, but it also like it's just like having the real guys in the room like amps up everything. I was sitting next I to imagine. randoms, and they enjoyed the hell. They enjoyed, of it. Okay, the people were crying. Like it hit all of its marks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I imagine. And I, I didn't. And Cheech did such a good job. Like I didn't, I didn't know that that comic relief would be so uh, important to the, I think the, the emotional, you know, through line of it. Like I, I was just like, I was thrilled with it. I thought it was amazing. So I was super, super I thought it was a great, great screening. So I digress. No, you don't. I <laughs> think that's the essence of your films is like just this heart, so much heart and soul and just beautiful. Be- like cinematically, this film is just gorgeous. It's yeah. really well, I appreciate pretty it. to I, look at. It's funny because I like I'm not a super emotional person in real life, and so like it, so it's kind of strange. Like I like I used to think I was kind of like an android sometimes, and but then I end up making these movies. I think it's maybe that's part of what it is. It's like I need to make it like really emotional for me to have a reaction to it, and then every uh, normal people were like, "Whoa, this is really emotional." Um, but I, I, it's it's now strange to have made two movies in a row where I'm like the goal is. I want them to cry at this point. I want them to laugh at this point. And and it's starting, you know, you start you can uh, you can kind of predict that it it works, you know. Like uh we you know on the vessel that was a it's an art house movie. You're you're not, you're not really sure when things are going to work or you're not even sure really what I mean, it was, I think it was heavily it influenced we can go to the East work for Terry and it was heavily influenced from like that yeah. world. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. The vessel was. The vessel was. The yeah. vessel was. Yeah, that was my first feature and it was uh I'm working under Terry you know, for, at that point, I don't know, two or three years or something. And just being in that that world, yeah. um, you know, I was already inclined towards those sorts of ideas from the religious studies degree and all that stuff. But Terry just- Let's say your mechanical engineer degree really came through. Yeah. That, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We had some nice, smooth, steady cam shots. Everything was, the rig was balanced. Uh, yeah, I, it, uh, but it, it was strange because I thought when I made the vessel, I w- it was me sort of trying to find my own way, but really heavily influenced by Terry. I mean, just like that- the Tree of Life completely rocked my world. I, I had never seen anything, had an experience like that. I So I saw The Tree of Life for the first time ha- after having worked on it for a couple of years. I saw it for the first time in that same theater that the, the long, Paramount. The Paramount. That's amazing. And so so to me, the most amazing experience I've ever had in that room was The Tree of Life. That that was, uh, it just felt like it was, I had seen all the raw footage because I had I was in the editing, you know, I was an editing intern for uh, forever. And um, and I, I had been, I was friends with AJ and all the editors and I, I knew, I read the script. So you think you know what you're getting, and then it was just like, what on earth? How did this happen? It just felt like a miracle. Um, so the vessel was me kind of playing with that sort of yeah. uh, that, tone and tone in that yeah, space, yeah. but ultimately, like it just it didn't it didn't really work. Um, and I think what I, after I did the vessel, I, you know, it was my first film, and I, th- I and I'm trying to imitate like even Terry's early movies were less experimental, yeah, yeah. and so it's like I'm. I, I, I'm like trying to dunk from the free throw line, like my first time uh, stepping on the court, you know, and it's like this guy, I, I'm imitating one of the masters on one of the greatest films of all time. And so I think, I think maybe I reached a little bit too far on that one. So then uh, on Blue Miracle, it's like, all right, now, now I got to go back to just layups and, uh, you know, how, how, how to dribble without just hit, hit bouncing off my own foot. And, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and so, the, so Blue Miracle was me really kind of playing it safer and just going back to the basics of like, all right, just did I get this beat? Did I, do people understand this moment? And then the long game, I think, was me being able to stretch a little bit. It's like, okay, I think I figured out the family film thing, which is movies that I don't even really watch family. You know, I mean, I, I used to when I was younger, but I, 
So I had to kind it's of re- also material the genre. you didn't write. It's material yeah. that came to you. It's material that came to me, and I had, and so I had to adapt it. I'm, I'm both the long game and Blue Miracle. I, I I adapted the script um, to, uh, and so so yeah, it was a hybrid of like a very commercial sensibility. Like, is this going to go to Disney Plus and whatever? You know, it's stuff that like Terry doesn't never think, right right. You know, and I wasn't thinking about on the right. Pencil. But is that where your mind's at? As far as like you're like. Is there a world that you're trying to live in that is different from that space? It seems like you hit the beauty, you hit the story, you also hit the accessibility, which is sometimes the, the some of the worlds that I, I live in and people I work with, we don't, the films aren't accessible to, to yeah. audiences. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the long game is so freaking accessible. And yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that became a priority for me. After after The Vessel, It I realized like I, um, there's not a lot of movies for normal people anymore I, it's, it's like it's it, true it's, it's like the blockbuster so taking over it's like the blockbuster movies or the 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 a24 films that i admire and you know but for for normal people they're just like you know my uncle who's a, works at pet boys and my what like these guys don't have anything anymore and so um if they're not into marvel or they're not into yeah, galaxies exactly. yeah, yeah yeah so it's the like the same it, could be said for independent film in the way that like you can't just have a low budget cheaply made independent film that just tells a story yeah. of human beings do you know what i mean like yeah. it, it has to be like it's it's got to be super cool yeah and have some sort of slant and therefore it's going to cost more money and there's no like place where people are just going to the cinema in mass to just watch a human story and independent of, film has I, as far as i can tell has become it's just sort of been, been overrun but it's very cynical and edgy you know like yes. that's what makes it, it's like you go to it if you go to an independent to film or an a24 movie like you know, it's the the worldview is very edgy and cynical, and everything's dark and yeah, not like it out. has to be. Yeah, that's like that's the vibe. And there's no just like slice of life stuff of like yeah. here's some people just being human, living this moment. You know, like just telling a story. Yeah. Everything has to be like you know some sort of cinematic point of view or something drastic. You and know? it's always like a, you know it's got to always be meta. It's always a commentary on yeah. itself and its things, yeah. which is like. I get all that stuff, like I, and I admire that stuff. But the people that I hang out with don't give a damn about any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and like now I, I'm actually now outside. Of, I'm in Dripping Springs now, outside of Austin, and it's like I'm now friends with like cops and ex-military yeah. and firemen yeah, and guys totally. who like they just run a landscaping company and things like that. And and they don't care about that stuff. Yeah. Like they don't. They don't want to see the sausage fingers and the. You know what I mean? Like no, yeah, <clears throat> yes. That's yes. just not what they. You know, it's like what is this? Yes. And so I. It, There's nothing left for them to see. Nothing for them because the, you can't. It's got to all be a superhero movie yeah. to get into a movie theater. That's all we're yeah. showing now. Yeah. Or like and I didn't. And I didn't really realize that. Like when I made Blue Miracle, it was like I just. I just kind of needed a job at the moment. Like I, you know, I had made the vessel. I was. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do next. And they're like, "Hey, you made a movie with." Spanish speakers in a boat like you want to try this <laughs> and I was like all right you know I'll try that and uh and so I had to like kind of I just had to learn how that genre works you know and uh and so I, we, we made go it. to you because you're the Spanish speaker in the boat I, I think legitimately it was like the boat the boat and they're they're Mexican I guess and I'm like no nah, not really Mexicans but uh and I'm not Mexican but I anyway um <laughs> But that's fine. You're like whatever. I'll take yeah, the job. Yeah, fine. You're like C C C. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I tried. So I, you know, so I I did it, not really knowing what would come of it, and it it really did shock me. Like you mentioned, that hundred million people number, and that was uh, about a, a year in. I had, I was about I was in prep for the long game, and I had a meeting with Netflix, and they told us that it was it, it, based on the fact it's, that yeah, it stayed on the top ten for like yeah for two or three weeks. Yeah. It, like it was just a big Zack Snyder movie that that beat us and um for a while and. But it was like it was really strange for me because there was no marketing. There was nothing yeah. like that. Was movie was completely part of it's the Netflix power, the power of the homepage. Yeah. But the other thing is like it's just it's just word of mouth. Like I, it's pretty rare for me to be in a birthday party or a t-ball game or something where somebody hasn't seen Blue Miracle. Like it comes up uh, um, pretty often. And so um, when they told me that number that that many people had seen the movie, I that's when I realized like and. Firstly, like, uh, there's a, a huge demand for this kind of story, just something that's optimistic People and want uplifting. want something that's easy to watch. Yeah. When they're at home, they want something that's easy to turn feel good, on feel good, and feel, good, feel yeah. good and not have to be like, sausage fingers, what is this all yeah. about? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I know there's like certain times at night when if my husband and I do actually get to be in the same room together, we're like, okay, we just want a certain kind of thing to watch and ah. Oftentimes, that's something that is fairly easy on the psyche. Mm-hmm. You know, like life is hard right now. The yep. day is hard. 
and you want something that's not going to be. Now, there's so many movies I have that I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to mentally be ready. <laughs> to. There's a documentary right now I want to watch. And I'm like, oh man, this one's going to kill me. It I gotta, took me yeah. so long to literally drive myself somewhere to do zone of interest. I was like, I'm literally going to drive myself to a theater and pay to sit and put myself through zone of interest. When is that going to be? It took a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I really want to see this movie because I imagine it's incredible. Right. But I'm gonna have that's to commit what he, to that's what I'm putting myself through tonight. Yeah, and that's what he's saying. You can respect the cinema, but there isn't there isn't this mid middle ground. That's what you're trying to serve. Yeah, and it's like and and part of it I'm trying to think because it's like I don't want to be derogatory to the audience. It, part of it's that it's, it's not, I, when you say it's easier to watch, it, kind of. But like all the Marvel movies are easy to watch. Like King Kong is easy to watch, but they're not. But they're meaningless. Like I think they. I think people are looking for yes. something that's that's like meaningful. Doesn't make me feel terrible. Yes. Uh, it gives me some sense of like light. That maybe there's a little bit of glimmer of hope in the future. Yes. You know. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of uh, and humanity. Cinema. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. Like where people are not necessarily all bad. And you know. So coming off of that success of 100 million viewers and knowing that that hit, did, did you seek out? You said you're already in prep of the long game, or how, how did the long, long game come together? It was the same guys. It was the same producers who had brought me Blue America, and I resisted uh, making shout the long out game. Mucho Moss. Mucho Moss, yeah, 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 and and uh, and Ben Howard was also involved with uh, um, and so with Bonnie Dale, and so I, I didn't want to do the long game. Like when they brought it to me, I had just done Blue Miracle. Um, he said, "There's no boat, man." What? Yeah, I was like, Where the kids? What? But I put a boat in. It. <laughs> yes. What yes. did you want to do? Like, why wouldn't you want to do the long? <sighs> because he wrote I, the vessel too. I feel. I felt, yeah. Well, I just felt like I had just done that, and I was like another movie where a bunch of teenagers are, uh, you know, cheering in a circle at right. climax. You know, it just right. felt like I had just done that, and so. So for a year, Javier uh, Chapo was like, "I think you should check this out," and, and you know, and I liked the script okay, but it just felt like I had just done that. And then, uh, and then I started getting, part of it was like, I started getting people bring up Blue Miracle all the time. They're like, we need more movies like this. We need more movies. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. You mean just out and about in the world? Like, yeah. Like at T-Ball yeah. or whatever, at the ju my kid's jujitsu class or yeah. something. If they hear what I do for a living and I tell them, they're like, I saw that. I just I actually just saw it last week. That's crazy. I'd love to have more like that. Yeah. And everyone's just like, you, why don't we have more movies like that? And, um, so it's part of that. And then also, you know, and then politically, like the the world started taking a weird turn and like the, the conversations around race, I felt like we're just sort of like both sides were like this kind of half-baked notion of of truth or something. And so I was, I started thinking about it and, 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 and most of the conversations around, you know, black America, it's not about Latinos at all. So, so it just kind of, me as an outsider, like I had to think, stop and think like, what do I actually think about this stuff? And so as soon as I have a question in my mind, about like about real life, then I, I enjoy exploring it through my writing. And, and so, so then it became an opportunity for me to explore and figure out for myself, like, what would I do in these situations? And what, how, like, what is the right way to conduct yourself when you're faced with these sorts of challenges? And so then it became interesting to me and it became relevant as opposed to just, just another feel good movie that kind of feels like it was yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that the Jay character, that was what's so hard is that he was faced with so many critical decisions to make what's, you know, what's best for. Yeah. To move the to move as a culture, move it forward, right? And, yeah. And I think that was super interesting to explore because because there's not a voice that's really given to the Latino sort of and there's yeah. a there's such a great history there and, and no yeah. one's ever no one we just don't there's not enough stories about. It. I feel like cinematically we haven't really seen, you know, the like the cultural Mexican like where they were yeah. excluded and oppressed, especially in that way, where it was like, uh, we don't want you in this club. Yeah. You know, we haven't seen that as much as we've seen the African-American. Yeah, they, yeah, like, it's been different. It's a different, different kinds of challenges, I think. And like, um, you know, if it, like I, well, for me, like I'm Latino, but I can, I could pass, like some people just think I'm maybe Italian, Italian or something, yeah, yeah. or you know what I mean? Like, so, so, so Latinos in general have, have a, a spectrum of things where like the, visually the, the, the juxtaposition isn't so great. We have other challenges like language. Like I didn't learn English till I went to, started kindergarten. Uh, and, uh, but like, I don't know. It didn't, I didn't really, I don't, didn't bother me. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's just, it, so there's just different, there, we have different sorts of challenges. So I don't think. Uh, I don't think Hollywood has caught on to the, the fact that there is a huge audience. Like Latino audiences are much bigger than even than, than black audience. The, yeah, yeah. The, just sure by numbers, it's just a, sure. it's a huge audience. Um, but I think in a, in, a, in a thirsty audience for this type of content as well. Too. I think so. I think I, I think so. We'll you know we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find uh, out in April. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. This was a huge mistake. So uh, so you know I, I don't know. It wasn't it, <laughs> just from a sheer just from the movie itself. It was amazing. So no, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think people will enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
So uh, then once you get there and you have it, then you focus on casting. Yep. How does that start? Well, so the movie I had, uh, Jay and this was attached when the movie was brought to me. And, uh, and how did he get attached before? He, because he had, because Javier, I think Javier tried to get us both involved okay, at once. Right. And Jay said yes months before I did. Okay. And, and, uh, and so Jay was. He's fantastic. By yeah, way. he was great. And you know, it's funny because w he immediately puts, uh, Jay is so polished and so professional that he yeah. kind of, in some ways, he kind of puts the movie in a specific, like, uh, it's not going to be gritty. Like, you, you know, it's not, you know what I mean? And, and which is great. I, that's fine. Like, uh, my, it's funny when I first saw Jay, I was like, well, first of all, this is like the most beautiful man I've ever seen. In my life. Like, this is <laughs> this is ridiculous. Same. You know what I mean? It's like, how, how are we going to cast his wife? Is, <sighs> uh, <sighs> and and I and I remember going and watching his show. Um, the uh, not the Hawaii fight. Yeah, Magnum PI. Magnum PI. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember, and I'm watching. I was like, this guy is just so cool. Like, can he be vulnerable? Yeah. Because like, I, I, I I was like scroll. I was trying to go through his work and see if he's ever vulnerable, and I couldn't find it. Uh, and so that was definitely a concern, but, and I talked to him about it. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> just lights always gleaming right out of there. Uh, but then he, uh, you know, when we were on set, he was able, it was like his, he was always perfectly, like he's a TV actor. He always knew his lines. He was always, he, he hit his marks. He always knew everything. And he, um, and so there were, you know, there were a few scenes where I was like, I need, I need more out of this guy. But he was like, a, he was like a, like a Corvette that you're like, all right, is there a six gear? Like, let's try six gear. And then you would push him and you're like, oh shit, there's a six gear. Like he, and he would just do it. Like he would, he was like, oh, you want me to get emotional? Okay. And it was like, damn, man. You want like, left eye, right eye? Which one do you want to do? Yeah. Come so out he of? was, but, but it was very, like, he, you could tell he's very, it's not a very organic process. He's just like, I have that skill that set. That skill, yeah, yeah. I can do that. I know how to work my instrument. Yeah. That's it. You just like, you just shift. Um, and so he was, he was just sort of like a bedrock. You know, you knew he was going to deliver. And, um, and then the counterpart to him was uh, Joe, uh, who was played by Julian Works. And Julian was somebody who, he had actually auditioned for Blue Miracle. And there's a young guy, uh, a young teen in Blue Miracle, um, the rebellious teen. And, and but the casting came down to him and uh, Miguel Angel Garcia, who ultimately ended up playing Moco in Blue Miracle. And I really loved Julian. He was great, but he was just, he was a little bit too big and strong and like, the stakes on, on Blue Miracle is like, are they going to get go back on the streets? I'm like, well, this guy can totally survive on the streets. Yeah, it's yeah. too tough. So I, I, we cast Miguel, and Miguel was amazing for Blue Miracle, but, but I always remember Julian. So whenever I was doing the rewrite on the script, the original script that was sent to me for the long game was um, Joe was just a really nice, clean cut, all American kid, never had any problem. Like he was just, he was just, he was just a good golfer, a nice guy, and he, everybody was mean to him. And I was like, well, that's boring, you know, like that's not, that doesn't seem. Like a very compelling, what's the arc there? Yeah, yeah. He couldn't play and now he's allowed to play. Um, so I messied, I just messied it up. I made the kids, you know, like kind of more little hellions and uh, the breaking the windows and the pissing in golf bags and the stuff like that. Uh, and Julian is- I mean, He's the opening with the fight. Like, yeah, you open with the fight, right? And so I did that because I just felt intuitively like there, this guy, this doesn't seem real like on paper. And I remember uh, whenever um, we, sh we screened the movie- and uh, and I, I was talking to um, the the guy who, who wrote Mustang Miracle, at, uh, Umberto Garcia. He wrote the original book, and he said, and I said, what do you think about how I changed Joe? And he was like, he's like, well, actually, like the real Joe was like he would get in trouble all the time. He was cussing on the courses and stuff. He's like, but I didn't put that in there because I didn't want to make him look bad. Yeah, yeah. Aww. And so you know, like I, I so I, 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 I can kind of trust my intuition that like I think there's something more here. Like I don't think the cockiest best player on the team would be this squeaky clean all the time. Yeah. So I kind of stumbled into the truth on accident just to, because it was more interesting. And and Julian was amazing. Julian, uh, he just has like a natural charisma, you know, that you just want to watch yeah, yeah. him. You, he he's he thinks he's the best at everything he, all the he time does, in real not, life. It's not forced, right? No, no, no. Yeah, he, he just owns thinks it. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I asked him because they, they needed a picture of like his tattoos to, for the makeup uh, to see what they needed to cover up. And I texted him, hey, man, can I get a picture of your tattoos? And he like texted me back shirtless, like flexing in the mirror and stuff, you know, and I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, ask, didn't ask for that, but yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, so those two were kind of the bedrock. And then Dennis, uh, I didn't have a role for Dennis, um, but I knew he was obsessed with golf. And, you know, when we were making Blue Miracle, he was... We're, we'd be looking for him. He'd be out in the parking lot, just hitting balls into the palm trees out in the parking lot, like he all day. He is obsessed with he's golf. Obsessed, obsessed. He is obsessed with golf. Yeah, 
I can the, tell the, you, the, he the, is obsessed production with production a little bit, right? He has oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, it's all the time. Like I, we were, we were, uh, we went to a PGA event. I mean, what a great movie for him. Yeah, no, I, I think he. That's the only reason he did yeah. the movie. I think. I, <laughs> it's like I can play I'm not golf. sure he read the script because he like he just yeah. wanted to play golf. Yeah. I we went to a PGA event and he was he made a we were out in front of a crowd. He and I doing a Q and A and he made a joke that like. He's like, I got into golf after after I graduated from Cocaine University or something like that in the eighties, and and uh, and everybody kind of chuckled, and I and I was like, I was like, yeah, honestly, like his golf thing is it's a real problem. Like we're on set, and I'm like, Could, can we just get this guy a bag of cocaine and get back to work? Yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody goes, oh, and Dennis looks at me like, come on, man. And I was, I was like, what? <laughs> you just funny. that was your joke. <laughs> yeah, you teed me up, and now yeah. I'm, I'm the fall guy. Yeah. But he's really that. I just punched it up. I just yeah, punched I it up did. better for you. But that's exactly like it really is like an, it's an addiction for him. Like, yeah. He, he does it every single day. So so there wasn't there wasn't really a role for him. I mean, there was there was a friend, but it was kind of a smaller role. Uh, JB had a friend, and so I had to write. I had to amp it up a little bit more and and write a few more scenes for him and um and that's always tricky because like uh you know you the expectation is like he's gonna end up becoming you know the the classic white savior thing and, mm -hmm. that, and everybody talks about um but you but I think that you handled that perfect yeah and I yeah. think that I think yeah. that he's he's he is there to support the rest of the cast and and he's he is his name does uh provide a lot of cachet in this space yeah. and stuff so uh, and that's the other part we we, we kind of get into on this is like how much of this ends up just being business as opposed to creative like it would be great if there was a world where we could just pick whoever we want but you're like right, right, right. we have to find people that can hold this financing and keep in and basically hedge the bet and dennis i think brings that value to to yeah. to it yeah creatively he was perfect for the role it, it, it's like slight it, like the role is slightly too small for him but he was willing to just you know that's fine. He was, Based that, a lot on the relationship you already had with him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he he was happy with how Blue Miracle turned out, and uh, and he just figured he'd be golfing most of the day, and he did. Like, yeah. he just he was hitting balls until we called him over, and um. So those three guys really fa formed the foundation of the the central cast, um, and then uh, and then we started doing auditions, you know, for for everybody else. Uh, we did. Uh, I mean, the, the the boys, right? That that was probably where you focused first, right? The boys were, the, yeah, they're they're the most important. Good, like, um, and that that dynamic of them. I'd, yeah. I'd be interested to know what that process was like to to find them and get that chemistry right because you you nailed the chemistry of them. Yeah, it was tricky because it was during COVID, so like at least with Blue Miracle, Blue Miracle was pre COVID, so I was able to get the boys all in a room together, see how they acted. And this, I couldn't do that. It was all remote, and they all just individual uh, casting calls. So I had to. So a part of it is like I would do I did a couple phone calls with them um and a lot of men you know when you do a group thing like this what I what I realized on the vessel was that uh that it's difficult sometimes for white people to tell the difference between latino people mm -hmm. like like legitimately like I have the same thing with other cultures as well I'm like eh, is that and so like what do you I mean? so like on the vessel for example I, I noticed a lot of american audiences would like they would mix up like leo's mother and and soraya leo's love interest like they they were just they're two darker skinned women with longer longish black hair and so like it would cause problems on set uh on the, on screenings like they're like oh I thought that was the mom or whatever um and so so after that, I've made really, I'm like really careful about making sure like if I get, a, if I have four or five boys who are interacting, like I need a tall skinny one and I need a shorter heavy one. I need the one with the curly hair. Like, you know, I, sometimes it would be like, yeah, this guy is amazing, but I already have the heavy guy right. with the curly hair yeah, and, yeah. and it's just going to be confusing. And so, so it ends up being partly just variety just to, yeah. cause you don't have a lot of time to develop each character. And I'd also say that's kind of a, a maybe you this came to you in a way that you don't know it, but like if you look at all the the goonies or other yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they all are all they, do that yeah all yeah. do that yeah. they all do that yeah. and and because it's just otherwise it, i mean the, the film feels kind of iconic of yeah. that world right yeah. Yeah. i think those boys sort of give that to it it's like yeah. oh you're the rebel you're this guy you're that guy yeah yeah and it's funny because like sometimes the, you know sometimes a review will say like like a blue miracle it's like oh the boys seems a bit cliche or something it's like but dude dude like you have you don't have very many minutes to establish each one of them. You kind of, and if they get too nuanced, then you don't, you kind of forget who they are. What yeah. Doing. So it's a, it's a balance. I think, I think I got, a, I got a little bit more right on, on this movie. I think that they seem a little more full fledged than, uh, fleshed out than they, they did on Blue Miracle. But, um, but yeah, it actually, Julian was, um, he was in the middle of shooting some fireman show, uh, can't remember the name of it, but he was in the middle of that, so he didn't. He wouldn't audition for me for a while. I, I reached out to him, and he and he wouldn't send me an audition tape. And so we went. We I would check back in with him, but we kept going down the path with uh, with all the other boys, and uh, we almost cast uh, Christian, uh, who uh, who played 
Mario, one of the other boys, he was almost going to be Joe if, and then finally Julian sent in his audition and said he really wanted to do it. But, uh, but those two guys were like kind of neck and neck. And I think, uh, he, Christian would have been great also, but Julian just had a, like a cockiness that it was that really, I mean, it's just hard to fake. He's just, yeah, yeah. um, and, uh, hence him being too cocky to get you an audition tape. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and actually, and even when he sent me his audition tape, he did it and it was great. And then at the end of it, he, uh, he was, he was like, uh, He's like, my name is Julian, and then if you don't cast me, you're making a huge mistake. That's amazing. And Marla, my wife, she was a producer. She was like, I don't like this dude. I was like, that is that's Joe. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. I was like, that's Joe. That's yeah. the guy that wants to like every every guy on the golf course wants to punch. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Like. Yeah. And so he was perfect. And uh, and if you could do it in July, that would work for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So he so so then we we got we got good. The boys were all great. Uh, and luckily they. They, as soon as we got them there like a week early and they all just, we made them just go hang out. Like just go, go to the golf course, go, go out, party, whatever you're going to do. And, and they Had became any friends of them with ever us. played golf. No. Yeah. No, uh, none of them play golf. Um, and that was okay. We got them coaches that kind of like could make them Man. fake it. Yeah. yeah. Julian, Julian got really good actually. Um, so there were a bunch of course of, he did. Yeah. He just got good. <laughs> it was just weird, man. Like he just, he actually was good. And he, so he was able to hit the, you know, we're right where we needed it all the time. And um telling Dennis, this isn't hard, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then the minute, Den the minute Dennis is around, he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dennis like amps up he's everybody like all on you. Dennis is like, Dennis is, he's, he's coaching everyone. Yeah. Oh, that's not Constantly. how you should do it. So I was like, yeah. Come on, man. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, so I had, so I ended up with a really good cast and then, um, you know, like, with, and then Jaina. So we needed a, a JB's wife. Yep. And, you know, I she's just, amazing. She's so great. And that's the thing is, this is the second movie now where it's like primarily about boys and men off either on a boat or on a golf course. And then, and so that it's really hard to have a full, like, rounded out women, you know, like you, yeah. Like we had like, the wives, that scene with the wives with you guys, with Heather and, and, uh, and, and Jaina and Michael, it was like, that I fought for that scene. I was like, this is all we got, guys. Like, there's no other women in this <laughs> yeah. movie. You know what I mean? Like, there's half the population is not even being talked about. Well, and then also we had the, and we also had uh, um, Club Wives. Girlfriend. And, yeah. pa Paula, Paula also was like, so So Paulina, uh, Paulina Chavez was also like a, an amazing. So we're, it, it's tricky because you ha you're creating all these women that also, they have to support the cat because you know they're 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 all support characters. In reality, like every character around a movie is male or female or whatever. They're all just reflections of challenges of the main character. Otherwise, they don't. They it just they the, everything diverges too much. And so, so, but getting you know having those four women just even just in a couple minutes, it just it just makes the whole movie feel more fleshed out, more sure. alive, yeah. more energetic. I yeah. mean, their relationship, Jay and his wife's relationship and the baby and all that stuff is, I think yeah. that's very important to understand. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought so. I thought, so. and, and cause there were some questions like, do we need this? You know, like the movie, yeah, the I think you have, long. yeah, it, it, it's, and I was like, well, that's like, that's the pale. I, 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 you know, I, I've screened the movie several times and like, I, I've had women cheer at the end. I, I guess I can't say what the ending is. Uh, they won the tournament, but whatever. Uh, but th that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, but there's parts of it, you know, with regarding their family, you know, the the marriage stuff that that it really means stuff to people. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, so it was really well, important. It's the motivation of why he cares about the boy, and he's kind of living the fatherhood thing out, you know, and that what what's pushing him so right, strong. Right, so right. I yeah. think you have to have that. Yeah, there's a void. Like there's yeah. something missing in his life. Yeah. So, and all that stuff was, you know, uh, created obviously. And yeah. So, um that's really jay that's really his life <laughs> jay's life yeah it's kind of jay's life well no jay yeah jay has a family he has, he has a he has a good family but yeah he's alone he's anyways i don't know <laughs> i don't understand actors lives so you, you know you could tell <laughs> i don't know what, i don't what know what you, you guys mean? do what do you believe mean? me we don't understand like, i don't know like they you know like him janet dennis all, i mean they're always traveling they're always by themselves all the time i, I don't you know and then they have families but you know, I, cause I'm only on set every couple of years. You right. Know? So, but like actors and all these guys are always. And you get to mostly probably work from home. And so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm writing. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But if you're acting, you're, you're on set. So, um, but yeah, Jana, Jana was great. Uh, she, she. How'd you find her? Well, she was, a, it just, she just was, she just auditioned. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I just got a casting tape and I like, I looked her up and she was like the lead in her own big TV show or something, you know? So I had, uh. And she was willing to just do like this little thing. And I was like, why uh, are you doing this? And uh, it turns out that a lot of TV actors don't love TV. Like yeah, they, it's you know, a grind. Yeah. Like yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they love, you know, they, they like the cinema and they like the, something new and fresh and, you know. And actors have a good story and they want to work. And, yeah. You know, yeah. 
But she was like, you know, she did it in, on that's her break. Just like Jay, that's, Jay was that's also- That's a great, great approach to an actor. Why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> well, because it's true. Like, and, and, and Jay, well, Jay was the lead on his big show. Like each episode of his show probably costs what the movie costs. You know, yeah. you know I don't know. And, um, but they just, they get tired, I guess, of the, the this is what the hell me, they get tired of the same grind. They've been seeing the same character for a billion yep. years that now. Would, I think they, that would drive me crazy. Yeah. And, and also I think uh, TV, you know, I, I shoot differently. So like I, our cameras are always moving and, and I don't force people to hit their marks necessarily. And, and so it's a little, it's more organic with, where they uh, they go on these TV shows and it's just like six cameras set up in a circle and they all have to just stand. In a no, circle and you got and tape you here. You got to look over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they find it very you know. And Jul like Julian also was like thrilled. He Julian is also on a TV series regularly, and um, so for them it was it was like a fun experience. Well, and they got to go to I Columbia. I bet they knew they, they got, got to go to Columbia. That's true. That's true. Which, Which was fun, a big fun draw. Fact, so I have I have we had to we had to ship white boys to Columbia. We did. Yeah, we had to go find people to play golf and and uh that was a fun ask for me to find uh hey you want to be an extra in a movie yeah in Colombia. <laughs> yeah yeah you came you guys came through with all those golfers yeah, yeah. because yeah. it turns out that uh there's a different definition of white in Colombia. like so because because yeah i'm cuban too so we have it like in cuba like i'm really white or whatever but it's like no nah, dude you don't like she's you know like, we need that that's what we're talking about and because they're supposed to be that's what the, that's the aesthetic yeah. of the, the and so in Colombia, we would we're like, I need like this many American looking people, and everybody would get be like looking like me or darker. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, eh. plus you need young kids, and I need young people that could golf. They yeah. needed to golf. They needed to look like the good old boy, you know, like the the all of them had to look like the 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 team captain of the golf team in South Texas, and yeah. and they didn't just didn't have that in Colombia. So yeah. you guys came through with all these amazing golfers. Yeah. Um, but did you enjoy your time in Colombia? And we're talking about Colombia. Not Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. Um, did I enjoy my time? Oh, very much. You did? So. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> That's good. 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 Yes, I did. It was wonderful. It was like. What did you do? What were you doing? Were you there? Uh, I didn't. I didn't really do anything. I fun. hung out with Jillian and Michael. Oh yeah. Um, oh we my ate. god, Jillian! I forgot about Jillian. The the oh. other woman that we're talking about. The women. She was amazing. Jillian too. is freaking. She's amazing. Oh my god. Um, she's hysterical. Well, that's the thing. So, so that because all three of you guys, you, Michael, and Julian, are all hilarious. I, and so, like, I've now gotten to the point where, like, I my movies have a little bit of comedy in them. Like, but it's a, it's just a flavor to like break up the tension a lot of times. But it's a lot easier for comedic actors to be dramatic than dramatic actors to be comedic. So, I, like, I'm just like, just give me the funny ones. Like, I just want the funny actors because they can always just get emotional. But, uh, but oh my god, yeah, Julian, just like she's always like her Jill eyes and you know her Bro, giant blue eyes just Jillian's like stealing hysterical. the Hysterical. I mean, all the time, twenty four seven, she's hysterical. Yeah. Even when we're like. At a drugstore trying to just get like, you know, I don't remember what we were trying to get, something like another bottled water or whatever, and we didn't have enough money and we didn't know how to count it. And she was like, I think we're going to get killed now. Yep. Um, <laughs> I feel really, really scared. We're like, it was really yeah. like, you know, and then we we're trying to cross the street. We nearly got killed, whatever. It's all a riot with her. Yeah. We just had the best time and we ate the most amazing food and we loved where we were staying. There were like mini apartments they were fantastic. We were felt so taken care of. Awesome. Good. And then brought Michael, you by Film Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Film Colombia. Then we, Michael and I went and explored. So we went all up in the town and like she went up to that amazing church that's at the top of whatever that you have to take a gondola up to oh. that I was like. I, I didn't get to do anything. I was I way too chicken <clears throat> shit to do that. I was just like, I, I can't. Like, I'm too scared. And she was going to go do that. But. I think maybe she didn't because I didn't go with her. I can't remember. But we went and saw amazing artists and we went into beautiful churches and we went downtown and saw just like all of the street life and it was fantastic. And then you guys came back to 115 heat. Oh, in yeah. Texas. It was just fantastic. And I will tell you, it it was the reason that I went. I mean, it was just like I, it's one of the things that I have always wanted to do in my acting life is travel. Oh. And so it just ticked so many boxes for me, you know? It's well, that makes like, sense because you're the other one that I was like, I remember looking at the script and I was like, She's, is she going to come out for this? Like, yes. It's pretty small. Like, I was like, <laughs> it, you learn the lines now. Like she, knows, had, she already knows them. She knows them you know? <laughs> I think I had to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so I, I was like, okay, I don't know why, I don't know why any of these people do any of these things sometimes. I but like, cared not. 
I okay. was like, I get to go be in Colombia for a week and experience some new life. And for an actor, that's I think just we're on to something. So we can get gold. we can get actors if we go to Colombia. Yeah, we give them a week in Colombia. Oh my god, I will go anywhere like to travel, travel. out of the country and experience. I mean, it's a big one for actors to to, to get to work and travel for oh, sure. Oh god, yeah. yeah, you can experience different lives, and and that's a big part of why we do what we do is to get to see and experience things that are like outside of our normal yeah. world. And so that was just everything for me. And the crew there was just so amazing. Yeah, and you, you know, the new foods and the new culture and everything, I just ate it up. It was wonderful. And then to be in a period piece, I love that period. And so all of the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe is fantastic for me. I, I just love it, love it, love it. And then the, just the landscape, the golf courses, and the just geography of Colombia is yeah, it's just gorgeous, right? Those, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had to paint all the mountains out, but yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah exactly. I guess I didn't. Texas. Yeah, I didn't really it's know. Supposed to look like Texas, yeah. Yeah. So, we, so we, when we shot it, there's mountains in the background of all the golf courses. I guess so I didn't realize when I was watching. And some of them we couldn't. We just couldn't afford to take them all out. So there's. Did you plan on that last tournament having rain? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That was planned? Yeah, those those are rain towers. Yeah, we, we had artificial oh, rain. Oh, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I just remember when we were there, it was like a rainstorm every day. Oh, no. That no. I was there like, were There were a couple of, yeah, there were a couple of days that we got, yeah, we got boned by, by rain that I didn't Bad. Want. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like, I wonder if they had to just like put that in and how cinematic and dramatic Yeah, yeah, no, no. The, the rain, I mean, uh, it rained every day. Like, it, it, was, yeah. it was crazy. It was every day, at least for half an hour. We, so, and so, and Columbia freezing was, cold. And freezing cold. And so, Columbia was... It was amazing because the crew was great and you have all these resources and everything's cheaper down there. But then, and then you're kind of weighing it against a lot of traffic. You're there, you know, it's like yeah. two hour traffic each way and then, um, and then rain. And so, uh, so it made it, it made it challenging for sure. Uh, and then, and then you're intercutting it with Texas. Texas, that's what I was going to say. It's hard to intercut. That. Yeah. So, yeah. so it would be like, it would be like in the movie it's like overcast and freezing yeah. and then like they walked around the train tracks and then it's like 115 degrees and sunny you know yeah. so so i think we i think we blended it all right in the end uh there's a couple people at the screening were like i don't think that's the valley yeah yeah there was a colombian <laughs> there was a colombian woman at her screening she's like i recognize my mountains <laughs> i was like get her out of here Somebody so get her. let me ask you this because you work with marla your wife and she's your producer. So, where what happens with the family at that at that point? How do you guys juggle that? Uh, it's a disaster. Yeah, it's yeah. not good. Yeah, it it, it uh, we um. Yeah, you guys were both in Colombia. That's, that's, that's what just dawned on me. I was like, wait point, a minute, where, where the were kids? the kids? <laughs> yeah, it was so on Blue Miracle. That was our first time making movies with kids, and we had at that point we had just had my third child or daughter. So, which is hard on its own it's hard on its own. She, so she was three months old and we went there so marla oh. marla was in the production office she was pumping milk oh. and like sending it with the transpo department to our baby i've done that on a shoot oh my goodness where i was in uh utah shooting a movie pumping milk freezing it and having it sent back to austin yeah that's crazy town yeah so she was not happy about that uh my parents were there and my aunt was there and we had no pair at the time. So we had lots of help, but like it was just, but then it was really hard because we'd come home in the evenings. And at that point, the kids were like four, two and newborn and they just want to jump all over yeah. us and stuff. And I was like, man, I've just been outside for 15 hours. I'm yeah. tired. And so that was, that was difficult. And then um, on this movie, we decided that that wasn't ideal for them. And they were, in, they had their, they were in school and things like that. So we decided to leave them here. And so we left them with my parents and they were with my parents for half the time. Uh, and then we're, with my Marla's mom came and was with them the other half of the time, and I think uh, I don't know if that was worse or better. I I, I think we we're gonna have to figure out a different arrangement. Yeah, and then how when you're, long when you're was shooting, that? I was gone for three months. Marla was there for like ten weeks, maybe. I, I, yeah, I was there for like three and a half months, and they were she was ten weeks. Yeah, that's tricky and difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but hopefully next next go around they're a little bit older and it just gets easier and easier. I hope so, and and. You know they're in a school that's more flexible and yeah. acting academy, so we can. We're, we're, our hope is to yeah. Do I always because I have yeah. to do the same. I always I always go live these mini lives in Atlanta or Wilmington or wherever to go make a movie, and you're gone for a couple months. And uh, I chose to keep them home and steady yeah. as opposed to like being all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't Marla know that, might, that was better or worse. I, I think it, I, I think for their sake, I think it would probably be better. Marla probably would want to stay next time and and stay with them. So yeah, that's something we're just gonna have to navigate. Navigate when it comes up. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe next time will be the sweet spot where they can come with you. Yeah, maybe. 
And then the next time, some of them will be older and will stay. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I only have a couple more years where they still want to come with me. You know, so, yeah. Well, they want to talk to you. Yeah, they they yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Or they even want to look at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or have you breathing? That's where I'm at yep. right now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so in. this to, we we normally start with this, but so where was the change that happened for you from mechanical engineering to religious studies, and then like, hey, I think I'm I might have this sort of like inspiration to be a filmmaker. Like, well, but what, wait, hold on. You were born in Cuba. No, no, my parents were born in Cuba. I Your was, parents were born in Cuba. Yeah, I was born in California. Yeah. Okay. And so then they brought you all over to California. My parents, they, my parents like met in California and then they, and then I was born in California. And so I moved around. My dad worked in oil. He, he was a mechanical engineer. And, uh, oh, okay. and so. Okay. That checks that one. Yep. Yeah. So, so I tried that. And then, and you any know, interest, or did you have? Yeah, to... I was. I'm pretty. I am pretty mechanically so, inclined. My okay. third brother is a mechanical engineer. Actually, the cinematographer on The Long Game, he was a mechanical engineer before he went to seminary to be a priest, and then he ended up leaving that to come work with me and make movies. So, oh, interesting. So you had both of those kind of. Yeah. So he and I are pretty similar. Yeah, we're similar in that we we both have. I have four younger brothers, but but my brother Alex, uh, we both have the sort of mechanical brain with the creative. And religious uh, inclinations. Yeah. So, and the uh, religious inclinations is that also your family? They grow. Did you grow up in? Yeah, the church? yeah. I grew up Catholic, and uh, and so I, I was I was mechanical engineering, but I was staying up all night like debating Protestants in my dorm, and you know, and when I wasn't just bowling or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whatever people do, and so I just I was just I didn't do well at all in physics, obviously. Um, and so I realized like that was where my passion was. So I start I decided to study religion to kind of figure out what I think is true and not true, and. Um, that was a bit of a disaster. Like, it's, uh, I would say that like studying secular history to figure out Dude, your dryness is what's great. true about the nature of the universe is like mm, not a good idea. I won't. I wouldn't recommend it to children. Uh, <laughs> so it was very confusing for me. Um, and uh, and a partly the vessel is like me exploring that idea of That's like, can we say. know anything? Yeah. You know, like what what can we actually know? Yeah. And so then you had to make it a movie where like people don't know anything, and it, yeah. you know, you just, it just doesn't come off that great. So now I've come back full circle. You know, now I. I have other reasons for for my my faith and my spirituality and things um, besides history, uh, and so so that's kind of that was sort of the trajectory. But when I was doing religious studies, I, I I didn't I was taking ancient Greek and things, and I and I, I but I was like I don't I don't want to do this stuff forever. I don't I didn't want to be a professor, and uh, and so movies just seemed like a, a powerful way to get to explore stories. And uh, so I didn't know much anything about it. I just said, well, I'll try that, I guess, and I, I applied to the. The radio television were you film into program. movies or were you? Yeah, sort of. I mean, like we grew up, you know, our family, because my dad was an engineer, like artist was sort of a derogatory term, yeah. you know, it was like artist meant you were like flaky and not reliable and, you know, emotional probably. And so, <laughs> so it was like. Clumped in with like hippies. Or yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah, because we're cute. You know, it's like just the Cubans are very practical and, and uh, so. But there's a, such a rich. I mean, like I did a documentary, a helpful documentary on the Cuban ballet, and there's so many artists there, and there's, I mean, it's a rich, rich culture. Yeah, I don't know those Cubans. So, <laughs> yeah, the Cubans I know are like nose to the grindstone, get your work done. Yeah, uh, you know, um, and so, so for me, like we would watch movies, like we were once a week, you know, we'd watch movies on a Friday or something. And my dad, I guess he liked movies, but most of the time, you know, I, there are many, many times he would bring home a movie from Blockbuster and the, like he forgot we had watched a week ago or two weeks ago. Like he didn't really care, you know. Um, and so for us, uh, movies was like, a, just a, it was a fun way to pass time, um, but it didn't, never would have occurred to me to do it for a living, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so where, how, how, how well, how well was that received? Where, where, yeah, go ahead. Uh, at that point I heard, like I'd already, after religious studies, he, you know, they were already like, well, this guy's not going to make any money. So <laughs> like, so filmmaking seems like a step up career wise. Um, but then how do you start? Well, so it was, you know, that I think that I was in Spain, my junior year of college. Uh, I, I, I lived in Sevilla for a year and, um, I didn't know what I was supposed to do anymore, but, and I remember that was when, uh, we were just invading Iraq and I was getting to see it like from the. The European, European point of view, yeah. and um, and I remember going to a theater and watching uh, Bowling for Columbine, and that was the first time I, I remember walking out of that thing, and I was like, I don't really know why, but I'm just really angry. Like this thing, this thing, I, I don't know what this. Now, now that I know how documentaries are made, I, I'm like, okay, there's a there's some whatever, but right. like, but it's it, the idea was that there was a powerful medium that actually like can change somebody's mind about things and stuff. So I found that very kind of amazing, and. uh 
and then I and then also and that combined with like I was going to a lot of bullfights and I was and I, and I was like this maybe somebody should make a movie about this. This is like Gladiator or something. So then I just started thinking like maybe I can make a movie about bullfighting or something. So I applied to film school and I thought uh, maybe that's what I would do. I did start writing like a bullfighting script and that now I know was like would cost a hundred million dollars, but at the time I was like this would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and so it was just that it was just like maybe you know maybe the ideas that I have in my head maybe cinema is a way to get it out there you know but I didn't really. But when I but I was a little older than everybody else in my classes because I came into it later. So I'm with other like college freshmen, and I'm a, at that point I'm a senior in college, and they all just want to sit around and talk about David Lynch and all these things. And I'm like, just t how does the camera work? How do you light things? That's how I got into cinematography because I just wanted my stuff to look better than everybody's. And so I, I learned cinematography and uh, started learning all the technical side. So that's why like I mean you saw I don't know if you you probably didn't see me because actors are always you're not around when we're working. But like we were like, you know, you, I'm up on ladders and I was setting lights. Oh, I saw it when I was I was at the parade scene and uh, Oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I saw you on the car and pushing it around and everything yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just all over the mm -hmm. place. Yeah. So that's just like uh holding cameras, yeah. Just being hands on for uh now I don't want to, but like when you don't have as many resources you I'm, I'm always down to do that so so I, I so in a lot of ways i'm a pretty technical filmmaker like i know all, all the lenses and all the f-stops and i can tell you exactly what uh what height i want the camera I, you know I, I can do that stuff um but it was because i i just had to i was you know i was mechanically inclined and i just want to learn how to make a movie i have my own ideas i don't need to like talk about with you guys about you know i, I was I, I just didn't have any patience for the the younger kids yeah, yeah. at that point because they you know i had already gotten past that phase like you know i just want to know how to do well, something. well you had yeah you you were already philosophical and ex like studied religion. yeah and i had already gone through the wasting my time first or two years like yeah, i had yeah. done that you know and, yeah. and now i just want to i need a craft i need a skill yeah. set and so, so how do you go from that to being able to, to and then you get into writing and you get into like talking to actors and being the whole creative side yeah and i started taking like when i i, I realized i didn't understand anything about acting uh, so I took a couple acting classes uh, when I was at UT and that helped a lot. Uh, I think that helped a lot with my writing. And so, um, especially early on, especially when you're working with uh, inexperienced actors, like by the time I got to the long game, like everybody's such a professional, like, I, you know, I'll tweak this or, you know, I, can you just step out of the, the shade or, you know, whatever, do it a little faster. And sometimes if I need to, I can, I can make adjustments, to, but I don't, I, I just find less and less that I even have to. Right. Like, if you cast well. Cast well, I trust them to do they their just, job. They yeah. just, they bring interesting stuff to the table all the time. Yeah. And so if anything, sometimes what I'll do is it's kind of what I do also in, in casting when I, when I'm actually doing auditions, I'll, uh, just for fun, if something's not working, I'll just tell them like the worst direction I can think of. I'll just make them do the opposite of how the scene should be. And you kind of see them like kind of get spooked for a second, but then they do it. And something always kind of interesting comes out of it. And then, uh, and it it breaks the mold. Like, you know, you, you can tell like when an actor's practiced the scene for three mm -hmm. months and they just walk on set and they just do that scene exactly. How, and it's like, all right. Got to break their- Now do it, do it like you're just reading your grocery list, yeah. you know, and they're like, but I, I practice crying. You know, it's like, I don't want you, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you go back to it and then, you, you know, so just, so if, if anything, like all I do is just shake things up for people so that they don't get too stiff, you know? Yep. Um, it's a trick we use all the time just to, we just give them direction just to see, like one, just to see, are they playful? Yeah. Do you want it? Can you play? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, that's my main thing. If I if I do an audition, I always give them weird directions. If they don't change at all, like because a lot of times their first take is great, and then I give them a weird audition and nothing changes, I'm like, okay, this isn't gonna yep. work because I don't They're know what's stuck. gonna happen on set. Like yeah. if they can't adapt to what's on set, then I don't. Um, I mean, I even go as far in the room as like I, I just try to push them and I try to scream, yell, or I try to get push them this way and just see how how malleable mm -hmm. yep. they, and how they can dance. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times I'm on set and I like a scene's not working, and I realize it's like maybe the writing is bad, you know, uh, and I have to make a change. And if they can't roll with me, then we're in big trouble. Yeah. Like we have to all be able to adapt on the on the fly. Yeah. So, yeah, I've sat in the room many times, and, and I, I, I've said just change it, do it this way, do it that way, and they don't. And they're like, "Well, I want to respect the writer." And I'm like, "Well, th this guy wrote it, and he's telling yeah. you, yeah. like he doesn't care, you know." And they just can't get out of there. Yeah. They can't get out of there. What they've they're they're just they're, they're holding on so tight. Yeah, yeah. I've had that experience many times. Screw the writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I mean, that's I'm here for that. I find enough directors don't actually do that. Really? I yeah. I I I will often get stuck and need to like do something totally different, or I'll see my other actors stuck. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I was in a scene recently where I was like, we're stuck. We need to do a take where we just do it like completely differently. Yeah. Cause I can feel that you're like stuck and we're trying to like achieve this thing and we need to just fuck it up and like improv it. In yeah. fact, is what we really need to do is we need to just improv it. 
we need to now do this scene saying whatever the hell we want. Yeah. Instead of trying to meet the obligations of these words and hit this blocking and dance with the camera and do the things that we're being asked to do right now, we need to just just do this fight. Like we would do it. I can't imagine from your point of view because like because like ninety nine percent of the time, if you're working with good actors and the scene's not working, it's the writing. It's like the scene sucks. There's no conflict. Nobody they, nobody knows what they're supposed to be trying to accomplish in the scene. And I don't know what as an actor, I don't know what you do when you realize that. Like it, it's funny because Jay, when Jay saw the movie, he was like, <laughs> we saw the long game. He was he was like, yeah, man, I don't know. It was just like. uh movie just works, man. You know, it's like, you know, you know how you like make a movie and you think it's going to be good and it never really works out the way you think. Like this one just worked out. And I was like, man, these poor actors, like, you know, all these people, they like sign on to movies and they, they think it's going to be a yeah. certain thing and it doesn't work out. And like, I don't, I don't know how you. It's not their medium. I mean, yeah, they, you can't, they're, you have they're, no just, control. they're just, they're just a paint stroke on the film. It's, it's, the writing is not it's working. Really, like, I mean, it's do? really not anybody's plus medium, you need a but job. the editor. <laughs> It's really an editor's medium. Yeah, how many takes do you do? You do a lot of takes or not a lot of takes? No, it depends. Like if it's a if it seems like it's working, I'll do two takes. I don't care. I'll move on. But like if it's not working, we're not moving on. Yeah. Like, uh, we're, and we're what, what is and people say all the time? What is it when you're like it's not working? What is it? Like, so like just, for example, uh, a scene that we had trouble with was the scene on the swing on the po the porch with JB and and and, his, and Lucy and yeah. his wife, where she's talking about the baby and stuff. Because that kind of scene, which I already knew that in the script, like that kind of scene has a little red flag on it because you could remove it. Nobody would ever know. It doesn't forward the plot in any way. Uh, and it's not obvious what they're trying, like she's trying to accomplish by telling him this. And so it's already in danger. You know, you already know that going into it. And so, uh, and then the main thing is that it's, a, it's, it's really, really high probability of falling into melodrama. Like it's just too sappy, too emotional, uh, too trying to, trying to be sad. And so, um, how does it even fit in with it? You know, you're yeah, the audience here and emotional yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, and so when you take a scene that like the, the words on the page are already trying to be emotional and then the actors try to make it more emotional, it just, it's too much. It fall, it collapses under its own weight. And so, um, so that was a scene where we're like, we did a, a million takes because, it, and then eventually, you know, it's like, I need you to do this like you're angry at him. She's like, why am I angry at him? It doesn't, because this is too emotional. Like, you know, we, right. and not, and you're probably angry at him for some reason. Like I'm married. Like, and you know, a good actor has to take that direction because it's not the best direction. Has to say, okay, yeah, yeah. What, what do I do with exactly. that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't care what you do with I that. I don't care how you do it. Just, <laughs> but you need to be, and you know, and I'm like, Jay, you, I don't want you to even look at her while she's talking to you. And that's probably going to piss her off, you know, or whatever. And then you start trying to edge it up and make it like a little bit. So it's not so sentimental, yeah. you know, um, that way then the payoff is them reconnecting. Cause if they're connected from the beginning, then what's the scene about? Like they're connected the whole time and they're just blabbing. Yeah. yeah. And so you need to make them separated and they eventually so that's the kind of scene that it just took a while uh to figure out to figure out the Did right they both vibe. show up with the just try, trying to do it dramatic or it just yeah i think the way it reads on the page is very sentimental that's the hardest part for me with actors they read something and, and it's pretty obvious like what it could be and that's the choice that most people make yeah yeah and i think jay was also like He's like, well, I would, you know, it's it, there. You have actors sometimes they're hesitant to just look like an asshole. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, well, I wouldn't. She's being vulnerable. I wouldn't just be mean to. Her. Like in my mind, it's like she just costs you your grandfather's clubs in the last scene. So, you know, unless you're Buddha, like you could be annoyed about that. Mm -hmm. I, I think you could justify that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, all right, you know. And so, but, but, but. Uh, if you don't push, then the instinct is to just be like, oh, tell me about how you feel about the baby thing. You know, um, and so. But I didn't know that until we explored it. Like, you know, I knew there was a problem. The, the, that scene had pins in it even in the script phase. And uh, and I knew it was going to be a challenge. And and But I didn't know what the solution was until we just did a bunch of takes. And, I, you know, uh, there's a lot of times I don't know. Well, also, too, for him, there's a, a risk that, you know, he's your lead. And so for him to be annoyed about the clubs when she's talking about the right. baby seem is going to make him less likable. isolate 50% of the population watching your movie, That's which right. is the women who might now hate him. And he's your lead and mm -hmm. you don't want, yeah, he's yeah. probably like, you know, even if it's not just the women, he's probably like as the lead, you don't necessarily want That's people right, yeah. to not like your lead. So he's got yeah. to tread lightly yeah. and you obviously would then feel obligated to deliver the exposition a certain way, right? right? Yeah, yeah, I could do totally see that. Yeah, and so that's why mm -hmm. you kind of fall into that trap of delivering it in that way. Yeah, but and that also, was actually a conversation all the way through too, because like throughout the film, like his initial, like Jay's first interpretation when we read the script was that, uh, well, at some point I told him like, no, I, I think, I think you're actually 
kind of manipulating the situation. Like, you just want the boys to have a team so that you could join the club. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, that's kind of a dick. I didn't see it that way. I mean, I could do that if you want, but that's kind of, seems kind of a dick thing. I was like, yeah, that do the dick thing. Like, that's that's what we're doing. Like, you're a dick at the beginning of the movie, and then you learn the value of, yeah, yeah. of this whole process, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> that's your journey. Yeah, that's your yeah. journey. It's like, you, you're flawed, and, and you learn that it's not just about you and this stupid club. It's mm-hmm. about the whole community, you know? Um, but so that was a, that was a conversation. Like his initial instinct was like, I'm the you know I'm I'm the lead the lead in the movie should always be a good guy, and like the you know most movies in this genre are played that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like the it's just the guy fighting for justice for everything. It's like, yeah, but yeah. like I'm not that good. You know, I, like I always have ulterior motives typically, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you have to learn. And to again, grow. that's the accessibility. I think yeah. we talked about earlier. It makes them accessible, makes the movie accessible because we're like, oh, I I I, I am selfish like that. Yeah, like yeah. If we all have like we. We hope that our personal desires, we to be, yeah, we yeah. want it. We hope they 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 dovetail with something greater. But yeah. a lot of times, what what gets you out of bed in the morning is is something selfish. So so like you know, as a human being, like all my challenges is like trying to figure out how to like okay, put what I want below what's best for my family, but best for my community, best for whatever. Uh, but it's a struggle, and to pretend like it isn't is just not yep. genuine. You know, yep. so um, so that was a conversation. Is like yeah, you got to be a little bit you know. Potentially, people think, "Oh, that sucks." He's he's kind of do. He seems like he's taking advantage of these boys a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's a struggle. I think that all actors. I, deal I with, thought you. you know? I thought that played out really nice. Too. I did too. Yeah. 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 I thought you guys walked that line, line really, really, really well. nice. Yeah, where it was kind of like he kind of saw the opportunity. He got it optimistic and excited, but and kind of felt like he was doing two good things, but also getting what he needed as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, so then, and then his sacrifices mean something in the end because you know he really wanted what he was giving up. And I, I think, and the, the challenge also with these characters is like, he, like JB is like half right about everything he's doing. Like he, you know, I, I think, I, I thought a lot about this stuff, um, you know, all the etiquette conversations and all those things. And like those you know, I remember showing it, like the script early on. I mean, you know, some uh, fee- some of the feedback was like, well, he tells the boys not to speak Spanish. That seems, you know, mm-hmm. kind of mean and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but like he's trying to get them on accepted on a golf course yeah. in the 1950s. Like that's, you you of play the time. game, like yeah. you play the culture. And and it's like, it sounds really, it, it sounds like kind of a hot button thing to say like, oh, don't speak Spanish to fit in. But it's like, well, dude, sometimes like I go, I went to a Super Bowl game the other day. I didn't even know, I had to look up who was playing. I don't like the Super Bowl. And I put on red to pretend like I cared about this thing. You know what I mean? Like you're here to socialize and you play the game and, and you know what I mean? And so every day all of us are, are figuring out ways that every every social interaction is a game of some sort that you're trying to, you know, like, hey, we're all in this together. We're united for this football game. So I'm going to come together with you guys around this football game, even if it's some, a little bit of falsity of, from my perspective part about whether or not I care about this game. And I think that that's golf is a, that's a huge part of golf. Mm -hmm. Etiquette is such a big part of golf and it's not for no reason. It's like what I realized that I didn't understand because I don't play golf. I don't like golf and I don't like fishing. So I don't know why I make these movies, but like next up polo. Yeah. So as I was researching golf and understanding the ethos of it, it's like, well, yeah, like if you don't, if you mistreat, if you don't dip, fix your divots on the green, like you screw it up for the ne- last, the next right. guy. If you don't rake your, if you don't rake the sand traps, you screw it up for the next guy. And if you don't, if you like, nope, there's no ref. You keep your pace. Or if you, you gotta keep your yeah, pace. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't yell four when you hit a ball, you could hurt somebody. If you don't, you could lie on your score because nobody's watching right, you. Yeah. Like you have to keep track of your own score. It's all honor system. Mm-hmm. And so, so golf is, is, is sort of an, in a particular way, like it does actually require really strict social code otherwise the game just falls apart like the everything just the, mm-hmm. the, the, cor- the course gets messed up you don't trust the person you're playing with or whatever um and so just by the nature of it it, it all these little cues the tucking in your shirt and the wearing the khakis and the that, that's like a way of of demonstrating to everybody around you like i i know the I rules will play, and yeah, i will play i will rules. play by the rules you can trust me out there on hole 16 when nobody's watching that i'm not just gonna be like throwing a beer can in the woods or whatever um and so i think jb the, the, but the thing about JB is he just takes it too far. Like he, he takes it, he takes it to the point where he's trying to get them to deny their real identity and and be ashamed of their real because JB is sort of ashamed of his own uh-huh. identity, and so he ends up and his own personal desire to be a part of this club for himself. Yeah, his personal course. desire to fit in trumps his, his his true identity in a way that's not healthy. And so Joe's the the counterpart. Joe's like fuck these guys. I'm gonna be who I am. I don't care what they think. But Joe's half right. Like you do need to be true to yeah. yourself, but you also can't just 
you're not going to be get on the golf course of breaking windows and f- fighting on the well, green. I mean, that's why it's such a great story. I mean, Plus, also though, I think there's a lot to be said for getting past the bouncer. You know, yeah. Get once you get in the room, what you do with that when you're in there. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of that, and so it's like for women, for African Americans, for Mexicans, during all of that struggle, it's like they might have to dress like that to get in the room, right? Just to then change. The sure, conversation, yeah. you know, it's like, I'm going to wear the pants to get in mm-hmm. to the room with the men. Absolutely. And yeah. then I will be able to change the conversation, you know. Yeah, it's, and, and it's golf like, is a really extreme It's version. like the, that African-American man who got into the KKK, you know, dressed like them or whatever yeah, to that's, then that's have true, conversations yeah. <laughs> with yeah, them, yeah, sure. to then get them to understand, I'm just like you and you're just like me. We're both human. We both have red blood. To then get them to listen and break those barriers down. It's like how you get into the room. And I think that, to me, that's what I heard it as. You know, he was like, tuck in your shirt, Mm -hmm. do it, whatever, to get into the club. And then we can start to get them to hear us, you know, as opposed to like act like them all the time. Right. And and, and the thing is, we all do this every day. Like we're doing this all the time. Like uh, if I send a script to an actor or an agent and the formatting is all weird and I, I just picked the wrong font because I thought it looked cool, they're just going to throw it in the garbage. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, there's things that are just like, it's just etiquette that they just, this tells them if, if yeah. I send things directly to an actor without going through the agent, then they know I'm an amateur and they yeah. don't want to work with me. And so we're, do- we're dealing with etiquette every day. Everybody is in every situation. And so the challenge of, of trying to break into any new group or new social situation is understanding quickly what the etiquette is is in that particular group. Yeah. And if if you want to participate, unfortunately, like that's, it's not even unfortunately, like these, that's just culture. Culture, mm-hmm. there, there's there, there's our broader culture in the US and then there's micro cultures all over the place. And if you want to participate in the micro cultures of whatever, like that's fine, but you, you know, you learn, you learn how it works. And that, because we're all like, you know, I think you can tell a lot of times, a lot of times you can tell who you want to be friends with by the way they're dressed. And that sounds very shallow, but it's like, well, I can tell by the way you dress if you're into outdoor activity. I'm into hiking. I can tell if you're into hiking or I can tell if I go to your party, you're going to be listening to country music and I don't like country music. And I can tell by the, you know, and and I know what kind of food you probably eat and I don't eat that food. And it's going to be weird if I have you over for dinner. Like we just infer a billion things uh, immediately just based on our social media. We're all indicating to each other, like, what kind of person am I? And I, you know, I dress like this, you have no idea what I'm like, but (laughs) that- But in general, we're, we're trying to, we're, we're sending out social cues to each other that help us put each other in, in categories for interaction. And so to say, to pretend that that's not the case is just not genuine. So JB, I think is, is he's, he knows that really, really well. And in my experience, like the producers I know that are like Javier Chapa, the producer who brought me this movie, he's a master at this. He's a ma- like my manager's a master at this. Like there's, there's people who, you know, every agent is they're They know all the tricks. And so there are people who learn these skills very, very well. And then there's ones that are rougher and like Joe, and there's the creative genius who just won't follow the rules and whatever. And it's like, he'll get by on his talent and, you know, and that's fine. But, uh, but so it's, it's a spectrum of how, where you want to fall in that, in that balance. And I've, I've had to learn how to play by rules, Mm -hmm. you know, and how how to, how to interact with the system of, you know, the Hollywood or whatever you want. Yeah. I wish we didn't have to play by the rules, but I think our hour is up. up. Yeah, yeah. Wah, yeah, wah. yeah. But I think that's a great description of what you kind of made there of the movie as far right? as like, yeah, yeah, as far as where maybe your motivation was and the story you wanted to tell. So that was actually fascinating. Yeah, it's a movie with its shirt. Yeah. And you and and I would imagine at the end of the day you're very exhausted because you're processing all this. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, that we, mechanical I, engineering mind is yeah. just like yeah. 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 Um well we enjoy uh enjoy the conversation in, in April. The long game comes out in April. April April, what was it? April twelfth. Yeah. Yep. April twelfth? Yep. yep. Don't they? Uh they say nationwide, so uh, they're aiming for at least five hundred screens, but they're uh, hopefully a thousand. Yes. Yeah. See Super it exciting. In theaters. It's it. beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank Great. you so much. Our show today was recorded in studio by the good folks at Record ATX. Check them out at recordatx.com. Our theme music is produced by Jonathan Price. You can check out some of the sounds he makes with his project, The Mid-Cities, on Spotify. Follow, subscribe, and smash that like button if you see one. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you guys next time.